Do you ever find yourself getting upset or annoyed about things that in hindsight were just not that big a deal? Or are you a leader who finds that in meetings you're the only one that comes up with ideas? Then keep watching. So today we are going to focus on what ego is. I'm going to tell you about Chris. Chris is a senior leader who came to me because he was frustrated by the fact that his team seemed to be overly dependent on him. And he felt like he had to come up with all the ideas. And whenever there was a problem to be solved, he was the one that had to find the solutions. Is this something you can relate to? Have you ever found yourself in that position where nobody else seems to be coming up with anything and it's always down to you to be doing it? Well, to understand Chris's situation better, I went to observe what was going on between him and his team when they're in a team meeting. And it was quite eye-opening what I found. On the one hand, Chris was asking really good open questions. Now, open questions are excellent for generating good participation. But what was happening immediately after he asked that question was that he would jump into the space. He would jump into the silence and come up with his own ideas and his own solutions. And his team would kind of sit back and accept that that's what he did. And it was almost like they started to switch off at that point because why bother? Chris is coming up with everything. Have you ever experienced that in a meeting where you might find yourself just switching off because someone else is completely dominating what's going on? Or you yourself are feeling frustrated, so you keep coming up with the ideas yourself because no one else is participating. Anyway, what Chris had to look at was how he could manage his ego, because what he was demonstrating here was his ego in action. So let me tell you a bit about what our ego is, and let's just see how this resonates with you. Our ego is a well-refined defence mechanism. It's a whole system of defences, of habits, beliefs, decisions that we've made that fuel us and fuel our reactions whenever we are met with any kind of anxiety. Can you think about a time when you felt anxious and you've just jumped into the throw to help soothe that anxiety? That is an example of your ego in action. Now, for Chris, what happened was he was anxious when there was a silence. So rather than being a silence, he filled it. That was his positive ego working for him to help soothe his anxiety. But on the negative side, it killed off the participation of his team. And actually, they then learned to become dependent on him and not have to think of ideas for themselves. So you can see the impact our ego can have in a negative way when we let it get out of hand. So think for yourselves, how does your ego work for you? When do you feel anxious and how might your ego be jumping in to save the day for you, but also not having a, a very good impact on the results you're wanting to achieve? Do you ever find yourself in situations like Chris did where he's frustrated but he almost can't stop himself. That's when we need to pay attention to how we manage ourselves and how we manage our ego. I'd love to hear about your experiences. So do make comments in the boxes below and do like this video. And please do subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to be kept in touch with or when we post videos on this channel, then also please ring the bell.